and let's let's talk a little bit about um, overrun and what strategies you would employ there. Sure. I mean, there's two different ways to look at the strategy because the way that overrun works is attack defense. So if you know you're either attacking or defending, and you take your shot at it with your team, and then the roles reverse and you try it again. And so you know, as cog, who are always defending, um, you really have to have a good breadth, a good like uh, distribution of classes if you really want to succeed. So the classes are engineer, scout, medic, um, engineer, scout, medic, and uh, Am I missing? Engineer, scout, medic, soldier. And, and soldier. Yes, thank you. Um, and so, you know, if you don't have an engineer, you have nobody to repair fortifications, right? So you probably want one or two engineers so that you can repair and, and keep an eye on fortifications on both sides of the battlefield. You definitely need a medic because if guys go down and you don't have a medic to pop them back up with the stim grass grenade, they're going to have to go through a respawn cycle, right? Which costs you some number of seconds and can can be critical. Um, and then scout is critical, especially later in the game because later in the game the locusts are going to be bringing your opponents are going to be bringing much stronger enemies and if you don't have the spotting grenade to help your team identify which direction they're coming from and a spotting grenade also debuffs them so it's like when they're coming in with two corpses and a mauler if you don't have a, a, um, a scout throwing that spotting grenade at them to debuff them and identify them then you're really going to be in trouble right before you know it, they're going to be upon you at, at the generator um, and then of course the soldier just because he has the heavy weapon and so when the scout is spotting that mauler you want to be able to fire that bushka in there and like get rid of those corpses and those maulers and he also has the ability to drop ammo for people so during those really hectic firefights at the end of the battle when everybody's converging on on the cog that soldier is really critical because he's going to be get, you know feeding people ammo and he has the big gun right i think as locust um the strategy is a little bit different um, in the beginning uh, of the battle, it's often advantageous to overload a little bit. And so overload, I mean overload on a single class to kind of overwhelm the cog. Um, so you can do things like come in like really heavy with the wretches, right? So two, three wretches, which have their special ability is to scream, which stuns the cog, stuns the opponent. So there's these kind of evolved strategies where... You can, and they can also jump over fortifications, right? So they can kind of get deep into the battlefield quickly. So if you go in with two wretches, for instance, you can imagine the first wretch jumps in and screams, which stuns the cog while the other wretch attacks him. And then when that scream wears off, the other wretch can scream, and the other wretch, you know, this wretch who's on cooldown can attack. And so there's, and there's a lot of these kind of advanced techniques where, yeah, if I go in with multiple wretches, I can, I can stun scream them. And if I go in with multiple tickers, we can take down the fortifications quickly because we can just explode before they have a chance to repair and things like that. And then later in the game, uh, for Locust, it becomes far more of a balanced approach, we find. So it's like, um, because you've earned a lot of money and you've, you have now have the ability to unlock these very cool creatures, like these big bads, right? Like the, you can come in as the mauler, you can come in as the, as the corpser and really like, re, you know, do a lot of damage. Um, but it has to be balanced because if you go in as a mauler by yourself, you know, you're, you're still getting, you're going to get focused upon and, and picked off. So the great strategy there is let's go in with like two maulers, a corpser and a cantus behind them to heal. So you, you can imagine you have these tanks going in with their big, you know, boom shields up and, and their flails ready. And then behind them, you have the cantus who's healing them as, the, as they're being attacked. And so this far more like balanced, the teamwork really comes in in a balanced approach with the Locust like in the end game uh, more than it does in the beginning. And the last thing, just in general, doesn't have to be a specific mode, but what's your favorite weapon and why? Oh, that's a tough question. Um, you know, the Lancer is, is, even though it's like very much identified with gears, it's, it's really utilitarian. It's really awesome because, you know, it's, a, it's, a, it's an assault rifle. It's, it has a big clip and it also has great melee, right? It's always great to get the execution on the guy at point blank. And so oftentimes if I have something that I can pick up, I mean, I'm just talking to generic weapons as, as good across all modes. Um, Lancer is great because even if, if there's a long sight line, I can still be successful. And if I run around a corner and free for all and somebody surprises me, I I can still get the lancer up. I can still get the blade up and like execute somebody really quickly. And so, it's it's a really it has a breadth of value and it's some it's a weapon that I always like to have in my back pocket.